right now we're done with Finder. Just go into settings. In your settings, you're going to see tags. And you're also going to see sidebar. So this is your sidebar in your Finder. Most of you may want to view your movies there. Music, you can put a check mark there. Pictures or your home folder. This is the big one. A lot of people are missing this. And this is actually really important to have. Don't know why it's not default, but you should turn that on. I'm going to show you what that means. Also, you can go into locations and turn this on, but I wouldn't for that. I'll just get a little confusing. So we're just going to close this up at this point. And what we just did was add this into our favorites. So we can see that in our sidebar. So if I click on it, I can see everything that's in my Mac. So I can go into my desktop documents, downloads, movies, music, pictures, public. So all my main folders are right here. So that's my home. And just in case, if you want to move these things around, so if I want this to be up here, all I have to do is click on it and then drag it to what position I want. So I can leave it here. I can make it go in the middle. I can move it here. But again, all I'm doing is just clicking on it and then just dragging it to wherever I want. So that's how you guys can move that around as well and reorganize it. So that's a really good introduction to Finder. Now let's move down here. You're going to see Safari. So this is your web browser. From here, you can just type in google.com, for example. And here you go. You can go on and search for anything you want. You can even download Google Chrome if that's something that you like. But I would re recommend just using Safari. Now, in order to fully close any applications, you never want to just tap here on the red. I know that you might think you're closing it, but it's actually running the background if you just do that, pretty much minimizing it. So what you want to do is press Command Q on your keyboard in order to fully close this. Or you can go into the app settings right here. It's not really the settings, but the options and just put in quit Safari. But that's usually too much of a hassle. So just press Command Q just like it shows you here as well. So to fully close any program for that matter, again, just press Command Q and it's fully closed. Now remember that this video is for beginners, but also some really good tips for advanced users. Anyways, let's just move on down here below. You're going to see your dock. Now under your dock, you might not want all this stuff here because uh, you will not be using half of this. I'm just going to go through some of the basics down here and just show you what each one is. So down here below, you're going to see any apps that you have opened recently. You're also going to see your downloads here. Most likely you're going to see your system settings that we went over already. App Store, that's where you're going to download stuff. We're going to go over that in a second. Pages, this is the comparable to Microsoft Word. This would be like Excel. This would be like PowerPoint. Right here, your news, just tap on it and check it out what it is. But this is where you read the news. It's just an app. Music, this is where you can download music and play music as well. Apple TV, this is the app. So it's different than Apple TV Plus, which is a channel. On the Apple TV app, you can explore many, many channels and see which one you like. And this is also where you guys can purchase movies and keep them in your account. Freeform, we were going to go over later on. Notes, again, just keep notes there. Reminders, you can set up any reminders, contacts. You have your calendar there. FaceTime, this is if you want to make any FaceTime calls. If you have an iPhone or iPad, you've done those before. But if you haven't, this will just be using your email in order to make any FaceTime calls to anybody that you would like. Uh, it would be using your camera from your computer, by the way. Photos, this is where you're going to import and export any pictures onto your Mac. You can also keep your pictures in documents folder, for example, but most people are using photos now because it has improved so much. Now your maps is kind of like Google Maps. However, these are made by Apple. Your mail, you can set this up just by adding any email. So you can add your Hotmail, your Gmail, you can add multiple into just this one app. So you can, you can just go on and take a look at everything all in just one app. Messages, same deal. If you don't have an iPhone, for example, you wouldn't have iMessage before and you wouldn't be getting any text messages in here. Again, if you don't have an iPhone, if you have an iPhone, you could get text messages here, but iMessage is different. That's why this is called messages because you can be getting both and iMessage is just digital. So you can use that in order to send messages to other people that have Apple products, not just a Mac. They could have an iPhone, iPad. You could do that without having an iPhone. But again, if you have an iPhone, this would be the exact same app that you have on your phone. Safari, like I said, that's your web browser. 
launch pad this is something that you might not even want to have here but it could be useful it's just to view all your applications that you have in your mac quick look at them so now that we went over your dock right here you're gonna want to know how to take these out so we're gonna delete these from here we're not gonna delete the actual apps we're just gonna take them out from the dock because your dock might get too much stuff in there that you're not gonna use because anything that you have down here it's just for your quick access because at the end of the day to access any of these you can just go into finder and under finder you can just go into applications which is your third option and you're going to see all your apps so even apps that are not in there so again any programs that you don't see on your dock down here below would be under your applications folder so i'm just going to zoom in a little bit and for example contacts i don't need quick access to this all you have to do in order to get this out of here is drag it out so click on it and drag it out into your desktop it's going to say remove let go of it and it's gone did you just delete that app? No, it's just out of here. So it's not in your way. Same thing I'm going to do with calendar. I'm going to do the same thing with Freeform, for example. Apple TV, I don't need quick access to that. I don't need quick access to this. I don't need quick access to this. I don't need quick access to this. There's a lot of stuff that I don't need quick access to. And it's going to make everything look so much cleaner and so much better. Same thing with maps, I don't need quick access to that. Everything else I kind of do need quick access to because I do check them out a lot. FaceTime, I don't need quick access, barely use that. And there you go. If you would like to add anything in here on the other hand, all you have to do, for example, is go into Finder. Once we're in Finder, just tap on your third option. It's going to say Applications. And I can drag any application into there to have quick access to it. So for example, if I want quick access to my time machine, I can just drag that over down here just place it anywhere and there we go i have quick access to that or i can bring anything that was there before such as facetime i want to move that back in here i can move it back just by dragging it into this space so that's how you guys can add anything into your dock or take it away anyways right now i'm going to take those away but before i keep going i do want to highlight that time machine is something that's in under system settings and time machine is something that you want to set up if you have an external hard drive so if you want to keep a backup of your mac make sure to set up time machine it's really good it's pre-built into every single mac and it helps you transfer stuff from one mac to another if you want to upgrade later on plus it's a great backup i do have a separate video that shows you everything about time machine and how to set that up so make sure to check that out now something else that you're going to want to know is how to create folders and so on so technically, in order to keep everything clean, you want to open up Safari and create folders in there. So whether that's in the, your documents or downloads or anywhere else, all you guys have to do is right click and you can create a folder. And there you go. You can title it anything you want. Click anywhere out, just press enter, whichever. I can create another folder. I can just leave it as in as is just by pressing enter. Just going to leave it. Just click out of it. And there you go to rename a folder at any point in time all i have to do is just click on it press return key right here on your keyboard and then just use your arrows and you can go back and forth on it and then just change the name to whatever you like so i'm gonna delete this just pressing delete on my keyboard and i can just put tech and design for example youtube channel click out of it and there you go just change the name to delete anything so if you want to delete any folders or any documents, movies, pictures, anything really from your Mac, all you have to do is just click on it. Then you're going to press Command Delete. That's on your keyboard. And it's been deleted. After you delete it, it does go down to your trash bin down here below. Just right click on your trash bin and empty it out. That's the quickest way to fully delete it. You're going to see this. And then from here, just press on empty trash. So you're done. Now let's say you're having problems deleting anything. Well, just make sure you're admin user, which you are most likely. And in this case, we're going to right click here. We're going to go into get info. And then under get info, you're going to see down here below, it's going to say sharing and permission. Just open that up. You're going to see if you have permission to read and write. Just make sure you have permission to read and write. You can unlock this obviously with using your password. But for most of you, you're good to go. You can change all of this to read and write, read and write. Because if you couldn't delete it, most likely it was just on read only. So maybe that was getting your way. You can just put read and write, close this up, and then you can just delete it. In order to delete this, another way would be to right click on it, 
if you right click on it you can just select your second option where it says move to trash and there you go and then just empty it from your trash like I said now to empty it from your trash bin there's another way you can double click on this to open it up so just tap on it once and then you're gonna see the option to empty it out right here on the top right hand corner you're gonna get this option as well and you're done so that says you can delete any files right here on your Mac if you want to delete any programs then you could do it the exact same way or download an app that's called app delete that's what I use but you don't need it you can just delete it from here just like I deleted all those folders if you're downloading an app right here that's not from the App Store on your Mac all you have to do for example I'm downloading this one right now obviously click on allow it's gonna go directly to your downloads folder and in this case it's right here so let me just go on and open it up just by clicking on it it's gonna say open yeah and then you're gonna see this installation just follow the installation right through install and it's gonna download it it's basically gonna download the app and move it into your applications folder and that's how you do this so right now just by following that it's already installed with a DMG file it's gonna be pretty much the same thing and I can check out any applications just by going to finder I'm gonna open that up then under favorites the third option will see applications right here you're gonna see your apps which includes the one that I just installed right now so at this point you have all your basics for your Mac but you want to highlight one more thing if you click on the top where it says your time or date you're gonna see all of this so you're gonna get any notifications you're also gonna get a lot of information that you may want may not want these are your widgets and I'm not gonna show you too much into this there's other videos that go really deep into widgets but I just want to highlight that you can edit these you can you can have less or more but from what I've seen not that many people even use these widgets to get them out of the way just click on your desktop anywhere and they're gonna go away as well as if you want quick access to any of your main settings on the top right hand corner again just click here on this option so you're gonna see that you've got Wi-Fi Bluetooth airdrop these are your main things your display if you want it brighter less bright you want your audio to go up or down you can always mess around with these on your keyboard yes but if you don't want to you can mess around with them here focus is also good so you're not bothered with notifications all over the place so you can check that out and obviously we have music down here because a lot of people listen to music while they work get out of this just click away anywhere on your desktop and last but not least let's set up your email so down here below you're gonna see mail just tap on it you're gonna see this if it's setting up for the first time then it's gonna show you your inbox this will only be for your iCloud email however you can set up any email in here in this app so you can add your Gmail Hotmail any email that you want you can add it on here and in order to do that you just go on the top left hand side of your screen you're gonna see mail just tap on mail and here you're gonna see this accounts and settings what you want to do is going to add account which is your third option well technically fourth option down here below you're just gonna add your account and from there you're gonna see all these options so like I mentioned before it depends what type of email you've got if your email doesn't match any of these just go into other mail account but just to show you an example I'm gonna add in a Gmail account so that means it's a Google account press continue and then from here just type in your email it's gonna ask you for your password and then just go next 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 and you've added everything onto it so like I said you would just press next and yes if you got any security in your Gmail most likely you got a notification on your phone or your tablet you just have to open up that YouTube app and you would just verify there if you're doing this with Google now you can also add your Gmail into your contacts so you're just adding your contacts into here this app calendar you can sync up your notes you can sync up anything from Google really and I suggest just clicking on everything you don't have to this is just for mail but anyways let's just tap on done and at this point on your left hand side you should see after just a little bit just wait for it it's gonna load up everything for you and everything does keep loading for me right now it's refreshing I'm gonna see Google so that's my other mail account so on the top of your mail you're gonna see all these options you're gonna see all inboxes you're gonna see your iCloud or Google so you can tap on each one of them or just tap on all inboxes and you're going to get everything all in one so you can view all of them and you can keep adding more and more emails that you have from other servers such as hotmail for example into this one app so that's it for your mail account so i'm just going to close this up for now and like i mentioned before you can download apps programs 
from Safari. So because not all of them are in the App Store, but if you do want to download something from the App Store, this is how you do it. So just open up your App Store. And from here, we're just going to continue on. And I'm going to give you an example. So you can enable notifications or not with the App Store. What I would do is just not I just get way too many notifications. And then from here, you're just going to search for the app that you want. So we're just going to search for Final Cut Pro, for example. And let's say I didn't buy Final Cut Pro yet. Then what I would see on that specific app would be a price. Obviously, it's not $2.99. This is just another app. But this is just to give you an example. Right now, since I bought this before, I'm going to see this. So all I have to do is just download it. And there we go. I'm downloading the very first app into this Mac. Now, if I want to download any other apps, such as, let's say, Compressor, I can just search up for it. Again, something I bought before. I'm going to go on and download it. I do want to mention that there's a bunch of free apps right here on your App Store. But as soon as the app gets downloaded, you're going to see this open. You can also find any apps that you may have downloaded in Finder. Once you open up Finder, you're going to see Applications. Click on that. And then you're going to see the apps here. So I can see Final Cut Pro is still downloading. However, Compressor fully downloaded, so it's right here. And that's how to find any apps that you have downloaded into your Mac and are fully installed. As soon as they download, they pretty much install by themselves. That's if you're downloading them from the App Store. However, if you're downloading them from Safari for a specific website, then that's a little bit different because it's gonna give you a DMG file. Just click on it, just follow, just click next, 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 basically. And what usually happens during this process is that Whichever app you download, it's going to be added into your applications folder. It just moves it onto there, and that's it. That's how you guys can do that. So that's how to download apps right here on your Mac. Other than that, that's it. I showed you all the basics that you need to know for your Mac just to get you started. If you want more specifics, I do have a ton of more videos with tutorials, but that would be it for this one. Go on and have fun with your Mac. If you have any questions, comments, you guys can write down here in the comments area. Don't forget to subscribe and like. Thank you.